Indian, textile artists are amongst the best in world history. And that starts from the spinning and the dyeing of the materials that they used, cotton and camelid fiber, that is the fur of the camels that come from the Americas. There's a number of natural dyes. Of course, they did not have any chemical dyes. So there are many dyes that they used to get different colors. The most prestigious were red and blue. And of course, red and blue together make purple, which is the ultimate color in pretty much all cultures. It's usually the royal color. The dyes that they had to work with, the indigo, which is found throughout the world, it's a plant. This is obviously not the plant itself. This is, uh, these are crystals that have been created from the indigo plant and uh, made into a form that makes it easy for us to dye with them. Indigo creates blue colors. It was uh, independently invented in West Africa, in Indonesia, in the Americas, uh, all over the world throughout world history. But it's a very difficult dye. It's a very specific knowledge that you have to have in order to create blue. The other color that was very important to them was the cochineal beetle. This is a bag full of little beetle, dried beetle bodies. And it, uh, it takes 70,000 dried cochineal beetles to make a pound of dye. Now a pound of dye is a lot of dye, and they're very strong. But these are the little tiny parasites that suck the juice off of the prickly pear cactus, which is a red juice. And their entire bodily fluid turns into carminic acid. That's where we get carmine red from. And in fact, cochineal is in Campari. It's what makes that liquor red. And it's, you can eat it. It's not toxic at all. But the Spanish, after the uh, invasions of the Americas, the Spanish made another complete uh, fortune on the red dye that comes from cochineal because it is very, very strong and very lasting. So we have red dyed textiles that are thousands and thousands of years old. And uh, when you make a solution of it fairly simply and you dip uh, fiber into it, the first dipping comes out a strong scarlet color and as you go and you play out the dye, it becomes a lighter and lighter pink. But you can make oranges, you can go towards purples. Your cochineal is a very versatile type of a dye. Other colors, of course, those aren't the only two colors. Uh, log wood or fustic wood uh, makes yellows and all kinds of different other natural dyes that were present throughout the Andes because there are so many different ecosystems that there's places for plants at all levels of altitude and dry and wet and moist areas so that we have probably hundreds of natural dyes from the ancient times to the present. A lot of people think that doing natural dyeing is difficult and it's really not. It just takes a lot of time and some equipment because you can't use the same things to do your dye that you can use to cook your food because one of the things about natural dyeing is that it actually does use chemicals that you, know, you shouldn't ingest. So it's always good to take precautions when you're using them. You can do things outdoors, you can do things indoors if you have a window open. But using all these different chemicals gives you the freedom to get as many different shades of color as you want. Here we have three squares of silk that were all dyed with cochineal, the famous red dye of the Americas. And the way that you get the dye to work with is you boil the original source, in this case, bugs. And it takes a long time to get this liquid here. It's called stock, dye stock. And you soak the bugs overnight, and then you boil them for about an hour, and you'll get this nice red. You can keep boiling the bugs for many hours to get many different shades of red, but it's good to start with your basic first stock. It'll be the strongest and it'll be the easiest to work with. Then you have to decide what material you are going to treat your fiber with because the dye will often not take by itself or if it does, it won't last as long, you won't get as good a result. 
So there's a couple of choices that you have. The most common choice and the one that I would recommend to people trying to do this is called alum. Alum is essentially pickling salts. This is the one that won't harm you. You can buy this in the drugstore. If you're a first time dyer, you don't have to get a whole new set of pots. And when you treat your fiber with this, you have to boil the fiber, like you boil the dye. You put this in the water and then you boil the fiber for a certain length of time. And sometimes you can do it overnight if you just set it in some warm water, but it takes longer. The more heat, the less time that it takes. So when I took my silk and I did my mordanting, the process of treating the fiber with the chemical, and I duly put it in my cochineal stock and heated that for another hour, you can see where the time just keeps adding up on this process, I got this very lovely plum color, almost a scarlet. And the interesting thing about this cloth is that you can see where I messed up. You can see these dark circles, and this is where it was touching the pot on the bottom. You want to make sure that your fiber doesn't touch the pot, so you've got to have enough water in there, and it also can't have any bubbles popping up. If you've tried to wash your wool sweater and push it down, it doesn't always want to go down, and there's bubbles and things that get trapped underneath it, so you have to be very careful. So, you can stop here. You can stop with your lovely scarlet and plum, but if you want to change the color, you can add more chemicals in a process called after mordanting, sort of after dyeing. And these two are a result of that process. This was put in a warm water bath with iron salts. And iron turns things darker. It will turn yellow to green. It will turn a light purple into a very, very dark purple. The other thing that you can do is you can use chalk or oxalic acid. In a similar process, all of these have slightly different steps and slightly different proportions, but it's the same basic principle. And you get a lovely scarlet color. And again, this is a good one because you can see where it didn't go all the way in. It's much lighter here than here. And also there's a little bit of contamination. There was some splashes from probably the iron bath. So it's a very touchy process and it takes a long time to get it just right. So today we are going to be dyeing two colors. We're going to be doing a red cochineal and a yellow with a wood dye called fustic wood or logwood. And the treatment that we've done to the fibers beforehand, it's a process called mordanting, is with tin salts. Tin is a little bit more difficult to work with than other ones like alum, which you can buy in the grocery store. Tin you have to get from a very specialty supplier, and it is toxic. You need to wear a mask when you're opening the bag and you need to have gloves on. You probably shouldn't heat it indoors. We're in a well-ventilated space, so we're able to do that here. And what we've done is we've taken these skeins of wool, hand spun, and they've been soaking in water. It's always a good idea to soak your fiber for a while before you put it in your dye bath. It gets it breathing and ready to absorb the colors. And then we're also going to do another technique, which is a sort of shortened version of a longer dye bath. Normally it takes about an hour for you to get a good base color. But I've used a material called copper sulfate. And last night I put some wool and some silk in a little bath with this and it sat on my porch all night and then what you do with that is you put those squares very quickly into a dye bath, a very small dye bath, and in about 15 minutes pull it out and you'll get a very nice light purple. So those are the, two, the three processes that we're going to do today. So we have two setups here for each different dye. You cannot do yellow and red in the same pot. So I've got a little crock pot here that has our yellow dye in it. 
and I've got a bigger pot here for our red dye. They've both been on for about an hour, so we'll see what happened. This is our yellow that was done with tin mordant. And it's a nice light color. It's a little bit dingy. These are ties that I put onto the yarn before I wound it up so that when it's dry, I can pull it apart and get a nice little ball. So this is our cochineal red. And I put two different types of materials in. I put an alpaca hand spun thread and I put a silk square so that you can see the nice spread of the color. Sometimes if it's a skein of wool, it can be difficult to see the color. I did pretty well with this one. There's no inconsistencies, there's no dark spots. You want to make sure you put a lot of water. It sounds like a contradiction once you've got your nice concentrated stock to pour more water in on top of it, but you really have to do it to get that nice consistency of color. Here is our wool. This got a little darker than the silk did, probably because of the different absorbent factors of the material. We'll get some shots when they're nice and dry so we can all see how beautiful they look. Now I'm going to show you a slightly different dye process. This silk square and this skein of alpaca wool were soaking all night last night in a warm bath of copper salt. Now they're going into a cochineal dye bath and they're going to sit there for about five minutes. Now I'm going to pull them out and you can see that the square of silk has turned this lovely lavender color which will get a little lighter once it's completely dry. Here you can see it spread out and it's already started to turn a little bit lighter than it was when we pulled it out. Now I'm going to show you one of those after mordanting or after dyeing process that we talked about earlier. You can see the skeins of wool and the silk square that we dyed in the cochineal with the tin mordant. And now I'm going to put some oxalic acid into a small container of warm water. Normally you should use a larger container, but I was running a bit short, so you have to make do. And I'm just going to stir it to get it completely dissolved. And now I'm going to stick one of the alpaca skeins in have to do them one at a time because they are, the container is so small. And it can sit in there for between 10 to 20 minutes. We're going to leave it for about 10. And you can already see from the color of the water how orange it's turning. And it'll be an even brighter orange once it's fully dried. <laughs> 